Dr. Williams. I'm hyped today in yeah. studio. We got big time guests today. Not only not only do I admire this cat, um, he's a brother in Christ, but I also consider him, uh, man, just a good friend, a close friend of mine. Yeah. And uh, Garrett Wallow with the Tennessee Titans linebacker yeah. is here with us today. <laughs> Bro, how you feeling? That you Were you coming straight from workout? Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm straight from workout, so I think I'm... <laughs> I feel out of place right now because everybody has a jean jacket on and a button up, and I have a nice little tight Nike shirt on. But I, I skipped man. my workout this morning. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll get it in later. But man, I feel I feel amazing, and man, I'm just I'm no special man. I'm a, I'm a normal human being. I just like when these guys get you know. I, I always let that be known. Um, obviously, me coming from a humble background, so. Yeah, I mean, I'm just excited to be on this podcast and, and chop it up and yeah. on there with two very great men. Come on. Ready to pick the vibes up. And you talk about, like, identity, and I think, like, in the NFL locker room, that's, like, a place where most men are lost in their identity mm. because they're tying their identity to their profession. Mm. So so it's huge, like, to really find out your identity is in Christ because, man, that's what keeps you grounded, yeah. especially in a cutthroat business to where you really don't know what your everyday looks like. Right. Yeah. I mean, how many men out there, young men, middle-aged men, old yeah. men, oh, yeah. are still in a career, still in a profession where they're being defined by what they do instead of who they are? Yeah, you know. still trying to figure out their identity in their 40s, in their 50s. That's yeah. it. And I heard, I heard a, um, I don't know if I heard a professor say it or I read it, but um, they had said, man, Jesus is far more interested in who we're becoming and less interested in what we're doing. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's good. Like, yeah. like, like who who we are becoming in the process. Yeah. And when we get away from that, that's when it starts to fall apart. And yeah. I think there are so many men today they're they're so dissatisfied hmm. in 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 where they are because they're dissatisfied in who they are. Yeah. They don't know, bro. Well, and yeah. if you define that's yourself real. by what you do, and you're discontent in what you do, then then you feel discontent in your very identity. Yeah. But if you can define yourself by who you are in Christ, like you're saying, then you lose the game, you win a game, you like your job, you don't like your job, good day, bad day, yeah. that identity is not affected by the the ever changing circumstances, right? right. Like if you're you're a man of God, then no matter what team you're on, what you're playing, or as Harper's saying, even after you retire, yeah, that identity is not affected by any of that. Yeah, absolutely. And then like one of my favorite thing, like scriptures or not scriptures, quotes I've ever heard was comparison is a thief of joy. Hmm. And I just think about like, man, if you compare your situation to somebody else's, you'll never be happy. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. because there's always gonna be probably somebody in a in a situation where you wanna be, mm. but man, you didn't never know what their situation looks like. You never know what their everyday looks like. They may be dealing with their own struggles. You know what I'm saying? So, mm -hmm. man, it's just important to really find your identity, being rooted your and be rooted in your identity because our emotions change. Hmm. Things change, situations in life happen all the time. But if we know yeah. who we are and whose we are, then we're gonna be good. This is where this is where I think it gets to the heart of what we're talking about today, is that is that we profess to believe something, hmm. and we want our life to line up with what we believe. That's so yeah. good. And and Eugene Peterson said that the that the most difficult thing for him is to get what I believe to line up with how I live. And he called it congruency, that yeah. he was always striving for congruency. That's so Dude, good. And I think that's the struggle for every one of us. Yeah, I yeah. want to practice what I preach. I want the, my beliefs to actually shape my behavior, right? And like you said, it, you know, I think about the, the husbands, the fathers watching this right now. You know, you're not going to be on TV like C.J. Stroud tomorrow. Uh, but you are going to be in front of your coworkers. You are going to yeah. be in front of your wife, your kids, That's you right. know, and, and your kids are watching you every day. I, I'll watch guys like you maybe once a week on Sundays. Yeah. Uh, but my kids, they watch me every day. And, and to yeah. have that line up and, and to have your belief and be, your behavior line up doesn't mean you're perfect. Yeah. Right. It, it just no. means you're, you're striving after the Lord consistently. Even when you fail, you see it as sin, you call yeah. it out. I mean, some of my, I think, best examples to my kids have come after I've sinned, after I've blown it, and I yeah. go back to them and repent and ask for forgiveness. And Jonathan, what you said, congruency or consistency is not perfection. Yeah. yeah. So Luther, Martin Luther called it uh, the tentatio. <clears throat> He said, "All of life is the tentatio, which which is l tension, mm. yeah. right?" He said, "And the tension is we know what is 
supposed to be or we know what should be, mm -hmm. but we live in the reality of what is. Yeah. 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 And we're striving for yeah. what should be. We're striving for what That's it's supposed good. to be. But we still have to live in the reality of, of, of what is. And, yeah. and a lot of life is how do you respond to that tension? Lions don't run with hyenas. Yeah. Mm. Hyenas run with hyenas. Mm. Lions run with other lions. Yeah. Like if you want to get better, whether that's in football, whether it's in theology, whether it's in holiness, like if you want to grow in those things, yeah. you've got to surround yourself with people who are ahead of you. Oh, that's yeah. good, man. They're a lion that that runs with hyenas because it makes them feel big. Yeah. <laughs> makes them feel good, right? They get yeah. to, they get to lead the pack, but there's no growth there. Yeah. Like, like there's no growth. You're not being yeah. challenged. No. You're not being held accountable. That's what you call, man, just think about that. Um, you know, somebody's always told me, if you're the smartest guy in the room, you need to go into a different room. That's bro, real. Some dude watching right now about to send a text to a guy saying, bro, you a hyena. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe they're the hyena. Yo, oh, yeah. Some, yeah. Some oh. Somebody's world. about to get a text. Yeah, somebody's watching <laughs> right now. They're like, I think I'm the hyena. No, I got a, I got a good one for you. So I tried to explain to my wife what a lion and a hyena was. So yeah. every time we... You know, we're, I have a conversation with her. She asked me, is he a lion? <laughs> I was like, I got, sometimes I feel bad. But like, well, he's a sometimes lion. But he's not really. <laughs> I tried not to tear him down. I said, I said but there's sometimes He might be a leopard. I said, nah, baby. He, he is straight up hyena. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, you know, that's a like code you know. word now. And I think, you know, we, we talked about the research that said 76% of adult men say that they don't have a good friend. Yeah. They don't have someone they can lean on. Uh, but what a blessing when instead of isolating ourselves, instead of trying to run alone or run with people that don't challenge us, you have a community of people that sharpen you, that challenge you. Yeah. I, I think that is the main thing we need if we're going to have that consistency in our life. Yeah, and it doesn't it doesn't mean, and again, I just want to clarify this because people be sending us emails sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't mean that that's all you hang out with. So, so yeah. I, I really do look at all of my relationships. You all know this. I've shared this before. Like every year I do a relationship inventory. Mm. Like I, I filter and think about the people that are in my life, speaking into my life, shaping my life. None of us are in neutral. Yeah. And there are people who I enjoy hanging out with, Yeah. but I don't grow when I'm with them. Mm hmm. Right, they are for a good time. Yeah, yeah. And it's nothing wrong with hanging out with them. I mean, we're not doing anything bad right. or illegal or anything, but yeah. but we go out to have a good time. Yeah. There's not a lot of growth. You know, I'm trying to influence them more than I'm letting them influence me. Oh, yeah. uh, but I hang out with those cats. Yeah. What I don't do is spend the majority of my time with those cats. Mm. Yeah. Then there are also those people in my life who who I don't necessarily like hanging out with, but when I'm around them, I grow. Yeah. yeah. So I force myself to be around them. I yeah. die to myself and say, man, I can't stand the sound of this cat's voice, <laughs> yeah. but I'm going to listen. I don't want to yeah. be with them, but I need to be yeah. with them. But I need to be yeah. with them, right? And then, and it's interesting, though, typically those people over time, I start to enjoy being with them <laughs> more and right. more, right? But then there's those category of cats, bro, that, man, you love being around them. Mm but then you grow when you're with them. It does yeah. sharpen you, right? It does sharpen me. And everybody watching, like, you should be categorizing your relationships. Oh, I had a youth pastor say it this way, and it's always stuck with me. He goes, you need a Paul in your life, that mentor, yeah. that person discipling Come you, on. pouring into you, sharpening you. But you need that Barnabas in your life, too, that guy that's you're running the race together, that brotherhood that you're praying together in the locker room before the game. They're yeah. calling you to encourage you, right? Uh, but then you also need that Timothy, the, the guys, maybe they aren't spir spiritually mature, maybe yeah. even guys in your life that aren't believers, right? Yeah. But you're loving on them, you're investing in them, you're hanging out with them, you're building that relationship, and, and you're that mentor to them. You're That's that right. one pointing them to Christ. And if we have all three of those relationships... I think that's when we get to strive or thrive in all the different things God's called us to be. 